The Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 is a really exciting watch with great fitness features, great style, but what makes it really significant, what makes it one of the most significant watches in the past couple years is that this is the first time Samsung is moving from their own operating system to Google's Wear OS. And now that we have a unified platform, we're supposed to be getting more and better apps. So not only do we now have access to Google's apps like Google Fit, Google Keep, Google Maps, and things like that, but now developers of other apps don't have to decide between Samsung's Tizen OS and Google's Wear OS. Now they can just make better and more apps for Wear OS. But all right, let's say you bought a Galaxy Watch 4. Which apps should you get? There's a lot out there and there's a lot of bad ones as well as some good ones. In this video, we're talking about my picks for the top 14 best apps you can get on the Galaxy Watch 4 and Watch 4 Classic. But for that matter, you can get most of these on just about any other Wear OS watch, whether that's the Fossil Gen 6, the new Tick watches, or even some older Wear OS watches. Now, if you have a watch as powerful as this and you're not using a lot of these apps, you're missing out on a lot of possible capabilities here because it's a very powerful watch and these are great apps. These are apps that I've been using from really all aspects of life, from fitness to golfing to even things like making a shopping list for going to the store. These are things that really help me get the most out of my watch. Now, with that being said, let's jump into this list. Number 14, this one's kind of a simple one, so I wanted to put it lower on the list, but nonetheless, I think it's a fun app to have. This is the Roku app. So if you have a smart TV, if you have a Roku, then you might know that losing that little remote, that little controller is really common. But if it's strapped to your wrist, you don't have to worry about that. So you can now control your Roku using your smartwatch. Honestly, such a simple app. I don't know why it's so exciting, but to me, I love having that because you literally can't lose it when it's strapped to your wrist. As a side note, if you're new here and you haven't yet subscribed and you're a fan of Samsung devices, I cover a lot of them. So be sure to go down and click that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss the next one. Moving up to number 13, this is one I use every single day and this is Google Keep. Now, I'm a little disappointed that we don't have Microsoft OneNote on here because that's really my go-to for taking notes, but Google Keep is another great way to synchronize across tons of different devices from your laptop to your phone now your watch and just take different notes, whether that's a shopping list or writing ideas down or to-do lists, all types of things to keep your life a little more organized. I use Google Keep for that and having that on my watch is so, it's fantastic because a lot of times I end up going for a walk and when you're walking, you're away from distractions, you think more clearly and you just have ideas that you wanna write down. And so having a watch to do that makes it so convenient. Google Keep is a must have on any watch Honestly, it should probably even be higher than number 13 on this list. But moving up to number 12, this is kind of a niche one. Anybody who loves to travel, I love to travel. You know that when you're going through an airport, you have tons of stuff in your pockets, your, your passport, your phone, things like that. And so having a watch that can really keep you on track helps a lot. And so this app is called App in the Air, which is essentially a way to track your flight, uh, to make sure you know like when it's on time, when it's delayed. And when you're going through the airport, you can quickly glance at that and have a better idea in real time of what the status of your flight is. I think this is really helpful. Obviously you can find this information on your phone, but rather than going into each respective app for whatever airline you're using on your phone, having it on your watch, I think is so convenient. Number 11 is one that I think anybody could appreciate. This is Google Camera. Now, especially if you have an Android phone that is not Samsung, you're most likely using Google Camera. And if you have the Google Camera app on your phone, then you can get it on your watch, and this allows you to take a photo remotely. Now, the ability to do this, you might wonder why would you want to do that? Well, if you have maybe say a group of people and you don't want to set up a timer or you want to make sure that you as well as everyone else is in frame, you can see a live feed on your watch and then take the photo whenever you're ready. It's an easier way, it's a more reliable way to take group photos that you are included in. Number 10, going back to a little bit more of a niche thing, this is the One Wheel app. So not everybody has a One Wheel, but if you do, it's really convenient that you can see a lot of information like the, the distance, the range you have left, the speed, things like that on your watch. And this is a situation where keeping in mind, it's not always easy to take your phone out when you're riding and, and you're, you're really focusing. Looking at a watch can be a much easier and safer way to see information at a quick glance. And kind of tying in with that, number nine is a big app that we've seen in the fitness world when you're focusing on trails. Whether that's for biking, hiking, running, or just walking on any trail, then this is an app that might be a good one for you. And this is Komoot, which is very popular for many reasons, but of course it does allow you to plan for different routes and things like that. And so when you're going off in the woods, like trail biking, for example, mountain biking, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you're on 
on the right trail and you know where you're going and you can plan that accordingly so you don't end up biking way farther than you wanted or way shorter than you wanted. Number eight, I'm gonna have to laugh at myself on this one. I mean, comes with the name O'Brien, I have pretty light skin and I get sunburned pretty easily. So this one is called UV Index Now, which obviously just tells you the UV index now. Like when you go outside, you look at it, it tells you exactly what it is, which lets me know when I'm going to get sunburn, when I should maybe wear more sunscreen and when it's totally fine to not. Like I said, not everybody's gonna need this. Anybody with even a little bit more pigment in their skin has no problem with this, but for me, I get sunburn all the time, so it's really nice to have that. It's something that I wish we saw in the weather app. Instead, it just says like low, moderate, high. Um, having the exact number, I think is a little bit more useful for me, but obviously, like I said, not everybody needs this. Um, but if you do, it's a very useful app, trust me. Moving on to number seven. This is one that I think anybody without a Samsung phone probably does need. Now, the native payment app on here is Samsung Pay, which if you have a Samsung phone, is the native one on your phone. Very convenient, right? But if you have any other Android phone, I would bet that the native app you have is Google Pay. And so having Samsung Pay in here and Google Pay on your phone, it gets a little bit annoying to have kind of that discrepancy right there. So Google Pay is actually the other app. You can get Google Pay on here, which is very exciting. And so being able to do that uh, is great because all of your payments are going to be through the same app. You don't have to worry about any kind of software mismatch. And on top of that, I know that the, like the bottom right button is set to open up uh, Google or Samsung Pay by pressing and holding. We can also reprogram the top button for when you press it twice to open up whatever app you want. And so if you wanna open up Google Pay, that's what I would set for that one. Number six is a meditation app called Calm. Now we have the breathing exercises on here. Sometimes that really isn't enough. And if you're looking to really de-stress or meditate or focus on whatever you're trying to do, then having a guided meditation might be very helpful for you. So if you go for a run and at the end of your run, you end up at a lake and you wanna sit down and meditate, having that guided meditation on your watch using the Calm app can be really helpful. And of course you can play it through earbuds that you can have wirelessly connected to your watch or you can just use the watch speakers to play it out loud. And I mean, the volume is not gonna be great, but for meditation, you don't need especially loud volume. Uh, kind of quiet is the point of that. But Calm is nonetheless an exciting app, a good one to have on here. And I like that it's also available on so many different platforms. Number five is for my golfing friends out there. Anybody who saw my top apps for the Apple Watch will know that the golf one I had there was Hole 19. And it's very good to see that that app is also available on the Galaxy Watch. So Hole 19 is a great way for GPS and score tracking. If you're into golf, if you play a lot of golf, having that on your watch uh, is again, a really convenient thing, especially for kind of a sportier looking watch like this. I mean, I think again, really useful to have that app and I recommend it for anyone. At least try it out when you're playing golf. Obviously you don't need to use it if you're more of like a pencil and paper person, but still nice. Number four is SmartThings, which is an app from Samsung that definitely caters more to Samsung devices, but also works with a wide variety of other smart home devices. And having it on your wrist allows you to do a really wide variety of things from turning on and off lights, uh, changing the temperature, uh, checking your refrigerator status if the door is open, turning on and off security cameras, all types of things you can do controlled very easily from your wrist with the SmartThings app. Of course, if you're not in the Samsung ecosystem, if you don't have SmartThings set up, it's not especially useful and you can totally skip this one. Number three is Google Maps, which I can't stress this enough. This is one of the most exciting things we got coming from Tizen OS, moving over to Wear OS. This just works really, really well. You can choose where you're going, you can see where you are and you can navigate for walking, for biking, for driving. And I really wanna emphasize the walking aspect here where if you go to a new city and you don't know everything, you don't know where you're, you're like your way around the city, right? So rather than looking at your phone and having a map, which makes you obviously look like a tourist, which might make you a target for scammers or anybody just trying to maybe steal your wallet, then instead looking at your watch is much more subtle, you look like you know what you're doing, and at the same time, it's very, very useful. So I love having Google Maps on the watch. It also works for driving and, and, and for biking as well, so plenty of other applications here, but Google Maps is just one that I love to have on this watch. That brings us up to number two on this list, which is Spotify. Spotify in the past really kind of sucked for Wear OS, honestly. You didn't have any offline Spotify until very, very recently, we finally got offline Spotify. So now if 
you go for a run, you leave your phone at home, you can connect your earbuds to the watch, and now you're able to listen to music while you're running with your phone at home. And that brings us into number one, the best app on here, because this is more of a sporty watch, it's very capable of tracking your fitness, one of the best ways to kind of incentivize your workouts a little bit more, because Admittedly, the Samsung Health app, like it gamifies it a little bit, but not nearly as much as some other ones out there. So this app, number one, is Strava, which I think does the best job of gamifying your workouts and kind of socializing them as well to make it a little bit more incentivized for you to go and push yourself harder and do more workouts because when you go on a run or a bike ride, First of all, you have challenges along that route. So if you're biking, there's certain speed routes and things like that, that that you can compete against other people. You also have little challenges for like the month. Maybe you can run like 100 miles a month or something like that. And the third thing, which I think is the biggest one, is that your workouts are shared with your friends. Anyone who also has Strava is able to see your workouts if you have that enabled. And in that situation, whenever I'm running, I'm much less likely to slack off if I know my friends can see my workouts. So there you have it. Those are my picks for the 14 best apps you can get on the Galaxy Watch 4. Now, of course, it's still very early on. This unified platform has a long way to go, and I'm really excited to see more apps developed for this platform. Some of the ones I'm really looking forward to that I think are missing on here are apps like Audible and OneNote, anything else from Microsoft actually, as well as Uber. Uh, We don't have Night Sky on here, like something that's honestly just a fun one to have. And we don't have Google Translate. Of course, on the Galaxy Watch 4, I'm also looking forward to getting Google Assistant. But again, maybe I'll make another video in six months or a year to update my top picks for the Galaxy Watch apps then. But for now, These apps really carry a lot of weight. I think these are very functional, but of course there are so many other ones out there. Leave a comment below and let me know if there are any other apps that you really like on your Galaxy Watch. I'm always looking for new ones, guys, so definitely do leave that comment. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Mike O'Brien, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.